Okay, good morning, everybody. I know um, we're getting ready to get started. Um, we have uh, quite a few folks that are logging in. I guess as the morning goes on, people will log in. But uh, what we want to do today is the back office, obviously, for a lot of folks, um, is one of the most important things that you have in a law firm. And in insurance defense, there's a lot of things that go on. So what we wanted to do was have some folks who have a lot of experience working in the back office, um, but also folks who um, are using maybe some of the features that other people have questions about or have used them, then know a little bit about them, explain or at least talk a little bit about what it means to them and some of the features that give them an advantage in a perfect law firm. So um, to start the day off, we have Jerry DiMaria. Uh, he's with Duffy and Sweeney, but he was with a prior firm. Uh, Hicks, Kavanaugh, and Cooney that, that used Perfect Law and he implemented. So he's implemented Perfect Law at two different places, um, which is one of those things that uh, you'd ask yourself the question, why would someone want to do something twice? But Jerry is a, is a person that's worked with us for many years, knows our product very, very well. And, you know, our goal is that he'll leave you guys with something like we did yesterday in the, in the front office, some things that will possibly... Uh, get you going and at least open up your mind to what's possible. Uh, after Jerry, we'll have Susie Flores. Susie's going to go into a couple of different areas. She, she worked with us yesterday in the front office, and of course she had a lot of good things. A lot of folks really liked uh, some of the things that Susie brought along. And then then, uh, then we'll have a special section on BI at the, at the very end, and I'll kind of explain the scenario of that when we get to the Cindy Celebrezzi. And again, we'll end the day off with just a roundtable, a quick roundtable with Val and Mike. Um, just to pass along some things from a back office standpoint um, that we think that you, you're going to do. And we'll just do a recap of everything we heard for the day. So without further ado, I am not going to stay here. This is not about me. So, Jerry, feel free to unmute your mic and uh, start our day. Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I'm very happy to be uh, speaking uh, during this seminar on behalf of Perfect Law and my experience with it over the past uh, let's see, this is year uh, 16, as Anthony mentioned. Um, I have converted two firms to Perfect Law, uh, the first uh, being my former employer back in 2006, uh, which was uh, an insurance defense firm. Um, and then back at the uh, end or close of 2018, converted my current firm, Duffy & Sweeney, to um, to perfect law as well. Again, um, I'm a really a big believer in the all-in-one solution and being able to marry both the front office and back office together um, into a seamless tool that everybody can use. Um, so um, I have, I do have the experience from the insurance uh, defense world, um, and uh, both we did workers' comp and tort litigation. Um, so I certainly have been through the pains of uh, submitting electronic invoices to third-party billing systems and, and what that entails, and really how um, Perfect Law helped us uh, become much more efficient uh, during that entire process. Uh, my first electronic bill was submitted uh, back in 1996, uh, pre-Perfect Law, uh, at least to our firm. And um, we were given a program by our, one of our insurance carrier clients that we had to download onto a computer, upload our time transactions into, um, process the invoices through their software, uh, then consolidate that down to a file, save it to a floppy disk, pop it in the mail with printed invoices, and that's what they called electronic billing. Uh, so a lot of changes have happened uh, since then between, uh, between the last uh, 26 years or so. Um, so in any event, uh, the first topic I've been asked to speak about today is uh, the AP imaging uh, module. Um, so hopefully uh, Anthony can bring that slide up to the screen for us here. And then we can kind of get going and talking about this a little bit. Perfect. Great. Thank you. So 
Um, the AP invoicing, uh, invoice imaging product um, I've been using probably, again, we converted in 2006, and we probably started using it the following year. Um, and so this has, you know, a couple, uh, many different benefits, um, both that have to do with electronic billing and that don't have to do with electronic billing. So uh, really can be useful for any firm. Um, and that is really in the back office, just to start simply, um, as you are paying your invoices, you have the ability to take their the invoices that maybe you're getting in the mail, uh, way back when we used to get invoices in the mail, or now even if you're just getting them electronically. But you can take them and you can image them in perfect law and attach them uh, to your invoice record so that as you're paying things, uh, you're sending these invoices into perfect law and keeping a record of them right in perfect law. So if you go to your, for those of you that are already uh, with perfect law, you can go into your vendor maintenance, uh, pull up a vendor, go to the invoices tab, um, and then right click on any of the invoices uh, there and do view, click on view image and you'll be presented with the invoice. So it's extremely handy if you have to go back and look at the invoices, or perhaps you have to produce one to, uh, to the partner, say, if they have a question about it, or if you have a question, it's very easy. I mean, so much, so much more efficient than using paper records to the point where, you know, we only keep paper uh, invoice records for a year, and then we're tossing them. So at the end of the year, we'll toss the records. You know, we're checking to make sure that everything is in perfect law uh, as we're going along, and then at the end of the year, we're getting rid of the records. We're not we're not keeping the the hard copy anymore uh, because we already have a TIF image within our system. Uh, that is all divided up by vendor. We can easily call it up at any time that we need it. So um, very, very simple, very easy, and very beneficial from just a back office standard, again, that we um, In terms of electronic billing, this is where I think the, the AP invoicing really shines. Um, I'm sure many of you or all of you, if you're all in the insurance defense industry, um, you know, are going through the pain of submitting your invoices electronically, and to the extent that you're submitting expenses, you're being asked to submit uh, substantiation. So you're having to submit the actual invoices. So if you're doing the invoice imaging up front, then you have the ability to do a few things, which is um, you can attach uh, for those that may even have PDF bills still, um, you can attach your um, uh, invoices to the back of your invoice. So it's all in one PDF. You, as, as someone's viewing the invoice, they're going to go through all the fees, the expenses, and then at the very end, they're going to have the images there of all the invoices that you paid. So they have everything that they need all in one PDF. Um, and they can view it in, in easy for to approve. That's also saving time on your staff for not having to go through and pull and call for invoices or your accounting people to separately, individually call and look for the invoices that match the expenses on that bill. I think we've all been there in, in over the years going way back as I do, unfortunately where you get a bill and now you have to start circulating it. Okay, who's got a copy of that, you know, I need a dep that depot transcript bill that we had, or we had the constable or whatever. And, you know, you had to pull all these things together. And so this system allows you to, to take all that out of it. You have to pay the invoice anyway um, out of the system, out of the account. It's just not simply attach the invoice there. So it's all there for you to have. Um, in addition to that, um, we've all done electronic billing and you're creating your leads file. So again, if you're paying the invoices and you are imaging them, uh, the neat thing is when you uh, process your electronic, your leads bill in perfect law, and it very nicely arranges all your leads bills into one uh, file on your network, uh, by client and matter, 
what it does is it puts the lead fill there and then under that, if there are any expenses for which you imaged uh, the invoices, you will have TIF images right under that leads bill uh, that you can easily submit. And again, you're not having to call uh, to call out uh, from other people, scan them separately. You have everything you need to submit to your third-party billing vendor right there. So it's a huge time savings. Um, and accuracy and, and all that. So you're not wasting time. You're not having to um, go back and do appeals later because you couldn't find the invoice, but you want to get the invoice in. Um, and then, of course, it gets rejected by the third party biller or put on hold uh, because you didn't provide the detailed invoice. And this takes a lot of that guesswork out of it for you. Um, on the front office side, um, you're going to have, for those are, that are using the check request uh, feature, which I would strongly recommend uh, for paying your client costs that your, your staff are entering in the check request there, they can attach uh, the image of the invoice right as they're doing the check request. And um, they can either do it through the barcode scanning module, where they can just uh, produce and generate a barcode, um, a sheet that goes on top of the invoice, and that, that could be scanned at a scanner, uh, and then automatically attached to the corresponding invoice before they post them. Or um, there's an additional option that you can talk to Perfect Law about, which allows for the ability to drag and drop invoices directly on top of the check requests that are being filled out um, so that the secretary just, you know, maybe she gets it in by an email. Now she can just drag and drop it over. So, um, you know, it just adds for a lot of flexibility. Again, it creates a lot of efficiency. And again, you're not going back later on and looking and trying to dig and find all these things. Um, you, know, you know, if you're scanning them in, the Indian separately, and you're still having to go through now, search in, come out the right one, and that what's on that invoice, so you're not dealing with paper, you're just trying to get to the right invoices, and this just marries it all up for you, so you take all that work right out of it. So. Um, I, you know, I highly recommend this module. Um, I have had it at both both firms, and while I don't do, we don't practice insurance defense where we are um, now, it still is a huge time saver um, because we attach it to our PDF bills like I, I mentioned before, and that's just all happens automatically, and the client has it all there. It's very transparent um, in terms of your cost, so they know you're not marking anything up, and, it, you know, it just makes, it makes life simple on both uh, the billers and the accounting room and the people up front because they're not having to go back later. So um, I highly recommend it. And I've also been told by Anthony, although I've never used the feature, that you can optionally um, have a workflow attached uh, for an approval process. So if you need these invoices to be approved by someone before they're actually cut, you can add that workflow in now um, as part of the whole uh, check request and invoicing process and payment, um, you can add this approval layer. Um, so if someone needs to sign off on it first, then you can do that. So, you know, just a lot of versatility as most, uh, all of the all modules of Perfect will offer. Just, and this was mentioned yesterday by almost all the speakers, the flexibility um, that the software has. This is just another example of that. So. Um, Again, really think the uh, the EP invoicing can really help from um, your electronic billing standpoint, but also uh, just from a back office accounting standpoint as well. So um, that's what I would say about the EP. I don't know if uh, Anthony, if you want to add anything in that maybe I missed or uh, no, I think you covered quite a bit of it very well. Oh, that's amazing. I guess it's early in the morning, so I still, I'm, I'm still mentally there. All that's right. Um, I think a couple 
uh, the next topic um, I was asked to speak about is uh, billing compliance. Um, I don't know how many people have um, a billing compliance if you have perfect law already. We, we, we were, I want to say, and Anthony may know, I, I want to say my prior firm when I was there, we were one of the early adopters of, of the billing compliance um, module because we did so um, much electronic billing that it was, as, as everybody knows that, that does it here, um, it just, it gets out of control. Um, there are so many guidelines coming in from <clears throat> what started out as just insurance carriers, but then quickly started getting adopted by corporate legal departments as well. Um, and even though here at my current firm we don't do insurance defense, we do have, I'm, I'm happy to say, I only have a couple of uh, uh, clients that require us to do electronic billing. So we do very, very little of it. Um, and don't really have a, a need for the billing compliance here, but we, at my prior firm, we were pumping out hundreds of electronic bills a month. And as all of you know, uh, trying to get timeline entries, expense line entries, um, to match up with what the guidelines want um, up front so that you are spending less time on the back end doing the appeal process, uh, which is a whole other layer uh, to electronic billing um, in and of itself. That, that could be a job in and of itself, just the appeal process. So um, having the billing compliance and trying to tackle as much of that up front and be in compliance with the guidelines uh, of your clients um, is a huge advantage. So um, if we can hit the next slide, we can kind of talk about what, what I'm referring to here. Um, and perfect law breaks their billing compliance into um, a couple of different components that they refer to as e-force and e -fist. Um And as you can kind of try to imagine it this way, we, we all know what billing guidelines look like, you know, what, what an attorney can do and can't do and what, what's a paralegal function and what's a clerical function and what you need prior approval for and all all the different various guidelines that I'm, I'm sure we're all familiar with. Um, what the eForce allows you to do is build those guidelines in directly into perfect law so that as people are adding time entries and expense entries uh, in real time, Perfect Law is looking at a particular rule that is tied to a particular type of timeline. And it is, it is determining whether that rule may or, or that, I'm sure, sorry, that entry, whether it be time or expense, may or may not be in, you know, in line with a client's guidelines. So if we're, if we're looking at, say, something like um, whether or not you need uh, prior approval for something, you know, let's say uh, you're going to go have a motion hearing, and almost all the guidelines say, say you need prior approval for that. Well, they, they want in the time entry, most clients, the fact that you sought prior approval, who you sought it from, and on what date you sought the prior approval from. They want all that within the timeline. So, you know, I mean, if you have a mix of clients that maybe not all require that, you know, people kind of forget, you know, does, does that, do I need to do that for that client or not? And it takes that guesswork out. As someone is in real time typing in a timeline, um, they're going to get a, they may get a pop-up message if they forget to put that information in that says, hey, wait a minute, you know, we were looking at your uh, timeline, and it uh, coincides with this guideline within this particular client for this particular client. And we're looking at what you type in as your description, and it doesn't it doesn't line up. You're missing something because something. Tri Thank you, Anthony. Something triggered it, whether it be a task code or an activity code 
or a word or words within your description that are either there or missing from being there. So again, you can really mimic the guidelines of your client um, and have it be very detailed down to the description entry um, to be able to determine whether or not you are in compliance with the client guideline. And I know a lot of you, and then you can fix your entry right there, and this is where the e-assist part of the program comes into play, because down below the, your, your description of, of that you're typing in real time um, is going, you can have the guideline there as well as suggestions for what may, someone may want to include in order for that time entry to be then become compliant. So that you're handling all that up front so that on the back end, when you go to produce the bill and the leads and then submit it, you're spending less time after going back and looking at an appeal from the client that you've got to do because they decided, well, we're putting this entry on hold because we need more, it was too vague, or it needs more information, or you violated the guideline here, we need more information as to why. And, you know, as you all know from, I'm sure, doing them, you have to go back and process these appeals invoice by invoice and either provide additional information or you may look at something and go, yeah, we totally messed up on that one. We have to eat it now. And so, you know, you're just um, piling on to any deductions that are valid that they may make just by, you know, having some uh, item that you now can't even appeal. Um, or you don't have the proper information to appeal because maybe you don't have the invoice handy, you can't find it uh, for an expense or something like that. So that's what the billing compliance module is meant to do, is to catch as much as possible by mimicking your client guidelines so that you spend less time on the back end uh, trying to fix things and get the money for the invoice that you should be paid in the beginning um, then I'm just trying to keep an eye on some of the questions that may be coming in. Um, you can also, and someone did remind me, thank you very much, uh, that in the billing compliance too, you can set up a rule to be one of two ways. It can either be called a critical rule, which means you can't the entry go in unless you've properly corrected it. Or you can just have what's known as a warning message that says, hey, you know, you're still going to be able to save this, but you need to be aware of this. And so there is just sometimes that you want to have something be critical um, where someone absolutely cannot bypass it and they cannot save their entry unless they actually make the correction to the guideline. Um, and then there are going to be some that you're going to just want kind of as warning messages because maybe you know, it's okay to put the entry in because they have to go back and maybe get some more information. And so you, you make those determinations when you're building out uh, your rules within the system um, so that you can do this. And, and what they've thrown up now um, here, too, is when you're going and doing, uh, looking at your time entries, there are some in red. Well, that means there's some type of guideline um, misstep that needs to be gone back and, and looked at. Um, and this can be in a time batch view. This could be um, if you've allowed the person to just have a warning message about something. This will come up um, in the bill processing screen as well as still things that need to be addressed. Additionally, uh, when you print your pre-bills, okay, you're going to see the error message that you crafted to be shown when they were doing their time entry. It's actually going to print on the pre-bill. So if something, again, was a warning message that they needed to come back to or something uh, like that, they're going to still see that message because it was never corrected. And so even if you're still dealing with uh, paper, okay, you still have the ability to have these warnings print that won't address front, again, as a last resort before the leads and the electronic bill gets gets processed and 
sent on to the third party billing administrator. So again, you're trying to limit the amount of appeal time that you're dealing with um, as much as possible uh, to in order to maximize the amount um, of, that you're going to get paid on your invoice, hopefully 100%, but we probably all know we never get paid 100%. Um, if you're working in the insurance defense field, it's very difficult. Um, the, the, the guidelines are ever-changing. Um, so, again, these rules are flexible. You can go back and update them and add to them as necessary. And, and Anthony um, actually told me yesterday where Perfect Law now offers an annual service to actually keep your guidelines up to date for you. So that, um, and Anthony maybe can talk a little bit about how that works, because that wasn't an option, unfortunately, when I was doing all this. I, I wish it was. Um, but uh, where Perfect Law will actually keep your guidelines update, updated for you, so that you, you always have the newest and, and the best in the system, um, and so that you can process your invoices uh, in, in, a, in a proper fashion. So again, I really think if you're doing any amount um, of electronic billing, as I'm sure most of you are, we were, we were doing hundreds a month. Um, and I'm sure many of you are doing more than that. Um, you were only about a 20 attorney firm. So um, I'm sure those larger are doing many, many more than that. Um, I think you can see the value here um, in investing in billing compliance and spending the time to get set up properly um, because it's really going to um, uh, help you up for the future going forward so that you can minimize your amount of time down the road. Uh, and, I can, and I can tell you that it also the patient too uh, so that, you know, at one point, uh, when we were processing electronic invoices, I probably, I think I had two and a half or three um, people processing invoices, and we got that cut down to one over time to attrition um, uh, processing invoices on a regular basis. So, um, you know, with a lot of efficiency to be had, you're willing to spend the time up front uh, uh, put into it um, on, on the front end of it. So that's what I would say about billing compliance. I think it's something if you don't have already, you should definitely check out. And for those that maybe are looking at perfect law as a solution, uh, it's definitely something that you should be looking at. Uh, um, so I think it's important. Anthony, you have anything to want to add? Yes. Uh, so, Jerry, um, you had a couple of questions. Uh, uh, we have some. I'm not sure. There's a couple of folks that may have a calling in. If you could please check your microphone and mute it because we're getting some feedback. Um, that, that's what we're hearing. It's not the folks that are logged in over the web. It's someone that may be on a call. Um, we did have a couple of questions. Thanks, Susie. Susie jumped in and answered one of the questions uh, in the chat. Um, uh, it, it dealt with uh, some of the violations. Uh, Jane, you had a question about how the guidelines can be maintained. Um, that's a part of the, the whole setup. When you purchase the, the module, there's some training that goes along with it so that you can, you know, we can show you how to actually set up the rules. Uh, you know, over time, and we, Carol asked about the guidelines, are they purchased, you know, when the module's purchased, well, what happens, Carol, is that you'll have your rules, you know, we take uh, and we show you in training and setting up a couple of rule sets and working with you, so that way you can be self-sufficient, but we do offer a service now for folks who um, are interested in having us maintain the rules and actually do uh, a little bit more um, beyond what you're you're seeing Jerry do, but it's it's something new. We're just starting in. It's not something that we really have put out there uh, in you know in mass yet. But we do have a couple of folks that are doing this now, where we're actually working with them to maintain their rules. Yeah, and and what I would say is these rules are extremely flexible, so that they handle all the different types of situations um, that you're encountering in your client guidelines, whether they be. You know, we, we had, uh, you know, we had an expense rule set up because we had a client that did not want us to pay 
directly for constable costs. We had to use their constable system, and they were getting billed directly. So basically, I, I put a rule in place uh, under expenses uh, that disallowed uh, anybody uh, entering a uh, an expense for a a uh, for subpoena for records and for constable services in general. And so that if someone was trying to enter a check for a constable on that client and they would get a pop-up, which I put as a critical warning that they could not enter it, um, and then they would come to me and say, hey, I, I can't get this constable. I said, well, for that client, you, you can't use your own constable. You have to use their services. So, you know, again, people will learn over time, but by having it in the system ahead of time, it, it helps to prevent those violations from beginning. So, you know, that's that's just one example of the flexibility of it um, that that is allowed within within the perfect law system. It's just, it, as Anthony said, it's all part of the setup and training of it, and I'm happy to hear that they offer a service because it, it is a lot to keep up with uh, on your own. But again, um, if you want to take that on, they will certainly train you on how to, how to actually set up the rules yourself, Thank you, which is, was my only option at the time. So. Now, Jerry, we, we had a brief, and this is, I know we're going to cut into a little bit of Susie's time, but we just to give people some insight into some things. You know, we did a, a case study, a follow-up case. We did a case study with you originally um, back, I think, around 2007, 2008. And then we did a follow-up, and you talked about, you know, non-legal scenarios that you use to, to manage things in the law firm. Um, would you kind of expand on that just as, a, you know, some good advice for folks? You want me to remember the back to 2007 or 2008? Yeah, yeah. Well, we did when we did the. Oh. You, you talked about oh well, you know we have this AP imaging, but we actually use it for more than just you know what we do with cases. We do we use it for everything, including you know um, oh, office. Yeah. I mean, if that wasn't evident when I was talking about it, I mean, all our firm we we image all all our in everything we pay out of the accounts payable system we image. Absolutely. If if I wasn't clear on that, it, it is not just for case related uh, things. It is literally for every invoice we pay uh, that we have a physical invoice for, an electronic invoice for, we, we get that into the system and attach it to the invoice so that we're not holding on to the paper, we're not having to look through different you know, files or records for it. It's all in perfect law. It's all, so if it's not case related, it is, it is stored in the back end based on the vendor. And even if it is case related, it is also cross filed by the vendor. So that, you know, you can find it very simply by just going into vendor maintenance um, and clicking on the invoice and being able to bring up an image instantaneously. I, I, I can't stress enough how much time that saves just from an accounting room standpoint. Uh, when you need that copy of an invoice for whatever reason it is. Um, but also, again, as I said, just from an electronic billing standpoint to be able to submit. So, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, if I wasn't clear on that, uh, it just goes to your, your practice management. It doesn't have to relate to case management. So, um, and I think I, I mentioned that, you know, in the process when, when we converted to perfect law and started doing um, – uh, all these different things and scanning and whatnot and, and efficiency we got in building, just through a, a billing, I'm sorry, just through attrition. You know, we, we cut down on the amount of people we needed in our accounting uh, room to get these bills processed um, and submitted. So we were, we were running two and a half, three full-time people, um, and then sometimes me on top of it to pitch in when necessary on the more um, I would say complex uh, ones, and well, we cut down that one person uh, was was handling it because of the efficiency. So it really no, I'm not advocating anyone go out and start firing staff and uh, you know and whatnot. But you know we did again we did it through attrition, and uh, it's just a huge time saving. So um, you know you're going to see you're going to see a difference. Um, from an economic impact for the for the firm as well. That isn't necessarily. 
All right. Well, thank you, Jerry, very much. Uh, as someone said, you gave us a lot of information in your talk, and, and we I know a lot of folks definitely appreciate it. Um, so up we have next is Susie Flores, who yesterday, Susie did a great job going through some things in the front office. So we wanted to bring her back because, you know, just like a lot of you guys, um, you know, you wear multiple hats with the, in the firm and you got a lot of responsibilities. And so um, Susie right now heads the user group in Chicago, uh, in the Chicago area. I think you would assume that we have a branch office in Illinois with the number of firms we have around Chicago now. Oh, um, okay. No problem. Okay. Well, Susie, uh, go ahead. Um, I'm going to let you take over and kind of take us through Maybe some of the things you want to talk about. Like yeah, that's okay. I, I call it. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Susie, and I am uh, the Director of Administration here at Nyhan Bembrick, and um, I was at a previous law firm with Perfect Law where we implemented it. And <laughs> if you guys were on the session yesterday, um, you will quickly find out that the front office is my jam. Like that's the thing, that's where I'm comfortable. The back office, it makes me sweat. <laughs> it is not where I've ever been comfortable. And um, when we did our conversion um, to Perfect Law uh, at my previous firm, I learned the back office quickly out of necessity. And the fact that I can even be a part of this conversation can is just a testament to how um, great this program is where it really is intuitive. Um, I am not a numbers person. That was never what I ever intended on getting into, but uh, because of some things where I was working with the front office and then how it, it interacted with the back office, I got uh, involved in the back office and then I was like, oh, I got this. So I will tell any of you if you're thinking of, of doing this, um, Everyone knows how hard it is to be paperless in a law firm, especially insurance, defense, and all of our records and everything that we have to do. Um, during our conversion process, uh, when we converted to Perfect Law, the back office went paperless immediately from the beginning and never looked back. That was the first step for us to kind of move it towards the front office, but there was um, everything through that AP imaging, which is fantastic, and he did a great job explaining that. Um, we went paperless immediately in the back office. Uh, that was that was kind of a, a feat for us. But um, again, it's that all-in-one system where things from the front office translate to the back office, and that's the only reason I can somewhat talk to you on, a, on a, an intelligent level, I hope, <laughs> um, today in regards to the back office. But the billing compliance rules are great, and I'm going to kind of um, go through that, too, in regards to um, entering time and general matters. So, um, again, what, what are the things that I have learned for the back office, out of necessity for the front office, are, are things such as general matters. We have non-billable things that attorneys want to keep track of and they want their credit for. So in our firms, we've initiated um, general matters for each of our individual attorneys. If they have um, a non-billable activity that they're doing, um, we've given them a matter to store documents in, their, their favorite contacts, their, um, yeah, I, just, I really like the shell of this one form, so I'm going to put it in there, but it also allows them to build time to it, and they needed that number. So I know, I think a lot of firms have that 9999, however many nines you use as your general um, non-billable matter. Each attorney has their own 99 matter. We have every um, client have a general matter to save our billing compliance rules to, to be able to go back and reference those. Um, and then, again, we also use general matters for things such as tracking CLE. We'll save our CLE, um, you know, anything that we present as a firm, we'll save those presentations in that general matter. But then again, everyone in the front office can, can take their time and put it towards this general matter in at year end or when you're doing attorney reviews, um, you can pull up the numbers to see not only what they're doing billable, um, but that non-billable work that they're doing can be broken down and you can see how, how many hours they're doing for pro bono or how many hours they're doing um, if you uh, do community service, if that's something that's important with your firm and, and they do that type of, um, of work and can put their hours towards that. Um, so we use that general matter feature for 
anything. I mean, the sky is the limit. So uh, we just wanted to kind of put that out there for you. It's great for calendaring as well, um, because a lot of times when you enter your calendars, you have to have a general matter to attach it to. So having those general matters um, is a great tool for you to have both front office and back office. Uh, the other thing that I like to do, again, front office is my jam, right? Um, time entries. It's my passion. I love I love teaching people how to do time entries, which is um, ironic as my entire career I worked at plaintiff firms. <laughs> so I never once had to enter time until I became a paralegal at an insurance defense firm. And um, I only had to keep time for eight months before I, I took on this firm administration role and started converting our pro our programs over to perfect law. But it's so easy in this system that, again, when we converted to perfect law, every partner was still writing their time, having someone else enter it, and be back off. When we converted, we had almost, I'd say, 75% of our attendees go to enter their own time. And when you say that, I know people are like, ah, that'll never happen. Can't say that to me. That becomes a challenge. Um, Debbie was such a huge champion there at Perfect Law and said, you guys, you really can do this. You convinced them. We had some, you know, power users in every level of attorneys who would, you know, lead the charge to learn how to do it. And they did it. Um, and one of those reasons is because the multiple ways that you could enter time in the system. Um, and pre-pandemic, attorneys were on the road a lot, and we instituted um, the iSlips app, which is the, the time entry for Perfect Law. And I can tell you it is one of the main reasons that a lot of our, our attorneys were able to make that switch to enter their own time. Um, they're in court, they're at depositions, they're traveling, they're, if you are in this uh, big city like us, they're commuting, they're on the train. And so they will use that time to enter their um, entries into the ISLIPS app. Here's what I love about it. I am now at a firm, again, who's been with Perfect Law for several years, but they never um, did Perfect Law until I brought it in a month ago. And the reason is because they dictate everything which a lot of firms still do, but they were still dictating time. So I was like, okay, all right. Now we're gonna get them to make this transition from either handwriting and then dictating or dictating their time and then again, I guess the first or second, what's gonna be that smoothest transition? And it's it's isolates. So even though, you know, here we are post pandemic and we're not out traveling a lot or in courts, we're still have some people who may be dictating time. And so I've instituted it here at this firm, and it's allowed for that smooth comfort level transition to be able for our attorneys to enter their time from their phone, dictating it right into the app. And the app is, is very, very smart. It can do, um, <laughs> you can do so many things. You can, again, you can just dictate into it and it'll pull up your recent matters and you'll be able just to click on them. So again, you're saving them time from dictating, hey, this is matter so-and-so, matter, client number, blah, 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 the date is, you know, you're, that it's automatically popping up for you when they're entering their time. And then they dictate it and your, your phone is smart enough where it does if maybe a doctor's name or something or an arbitrator's name. If you, you know, spell correct it, it'll remember it for the next time you do it as well. So they enter their time in iSlips and then it goes back in, in, into their time batch so that when they're back at their desk, they can still review it and look at all of their time entries before they submit them. Um, I always say this is the draft. You can also, when you're out and about, um, you know, we, we would even start to put travel time on our calendars so that they knew when they were driving. And you can, from your iSlips, you can complete your appointments. And again, if you're in the session yesterday, anytime you complete your appointments, you can have it pop up for time entries. And ISLIPS will allow you to do that too, where you complete your appointment and you'll be able to capture that time for being out. Um, ISLIPS just isn't for time entries, it's also for contacts. You can put some of your favorite contacts in there so that they don't have to um, add it to Outlook or they don't have to log into Perfect Law or out of the office. They can put their most important contacts in there. 
Um, but one of the other features that I was excited about, this goes with the um, invoice imaging that Jerry was talking about earlier, is, is the expenses. You know, <laughs> when you're doing credit card reconciliation at the end of the month, the most annoying thing is to be like, where's your receipts, right? And I, I can I can tell you I've had attorneys like come into the office like here and like pull them out of their pockets and like dump them on my desk and be like, I found all of these. <laughs> I'd be like, are you crazy? So uh, since again that AP imaging, which is fantastic and uh, allowing us to be paperless, they can take a picture from their phone with the ISIS app and enter that expense immediately. So when they're at the restaurant with their client, they can very inconspicuously click, click, done, move on with their lives, right? Perfect. You can also do your mileage. Maybe they were just doing their time entry for being at that deposition. They, they can now do their travel and, their, and submit their mileage and even calculates it for you on your ISLIPS. So brilliant. Again, things that are just so easy for everyone. Um, so it allowed us to be able to reconcile our credit cards so much easier. Um, we, we weren't missing expenses. We, we were able to timely bill our clients for those expenses um, and able to capture that time because we all know we try to preach as much as we can. Concurrent time is the best time. And the ISLIPS allows us to do that. Uh, and it is available for both Apple licenses and Android. So you doesn't matter what kind of phone they have. As long as they have one, they're able to do that. Um, so it's a great thing. If you haven't made that switch, I highly suggest. Um, I am on the push to get every attorney here off, off of their paper, you know, timekeeping, and I'm, I'm getting there. I, I'm winning. I'm winning the war. <laughs> and part of that is just through this ISIS app and getting those who dictate their time, I'm getting that switched over to ISIS. I uh, questions on that? I'll see anything. Okay. And that was just, this is just a picture again of how you can complete your time um, and get everything. So, oh, sexy Mary's, look at that, yeah. See, I'm telling you, it was my favorite thing to do, to sit down and, uh, with a brand new user to the firm and be like, you can capture your time here, you can capture your time here, you can capture your time here, and I turn it all on when they say that Helping them learn, oh, this is something I can build for, this is something I can build for, I should probably do that. Um, and the system is smart enough that um, even those events that haven't been completed or canceled or rescheduled, it won't let you close a file because, like, you've missed a billing opportunity. Uh, so it's such a great way to, again, have that front office, back office communicate and capture those time entries. Um, all right, so the last thing I'm going to move into are... Um, it's the tough subjects, right? Uh, think about attorney compensation and everyone like walks out of the room like, nope, I don't talk about it. Now, maybe you're a numbers person, I shouldn't say that, and, you're, and you, you love it, you love the spreadsheets. It's not my thing. But again, these are things that I learned out of necessity. And um, the way that Perfect Law has things organized is so simple, and it, it makes so much sense. Um, when you open a file, you have the opportunity you just still have more originating attorney to get their credits. Um, but then you also have the feed credit. So if you have people who split the, the working credits on the file, um, or you have people who are, maybe they're retiring and they're starting the succession plan. And they're like, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, mentor you with this client. I'd like to turn them over to you. So the first couple of years, you want to give, um, they have a 50-50 split. With this system, you can now put, you know, effective times and the type of attorney they are on that fee credit. And then maybe the plan, its succession plan is in two years, it's going to go from 50-50 to 25-75. You can set that date and switch that credit and apply it to that matter. Um, and then, you know, of course, when it's they're like, okay, the client's all yours, they can still have their your name on the matter is the originating attorney, but those fee credits are going to now who that attorney is and has moved on uh, that succession plan. Um, and I remember one thing distinctly is our prior systems, you could never see the history of any kind of those fee agreements. And Perfect Law allows you to have that history with the effective dates in there. And you can do it not only by um, a working attorney, but you can do it by their type of attorney. Um, you can do it by dates. There's so many different ways because I, 
you all know that they come to you and say, I, I wanted to do this, and I want my credit for that, and I want my credit for this, and they ask you to do the world. And I'm talking at a very, very, very high level in regards to this, but um, you know, this, this is important. This is important to the metrics of your firm. It's important to the metrics of your profitability, and it's important to um, your, your for deciding compensation for end, um, or whenever it is that you do it. So getting this part right, it is so key, and this the system is great. Now, what else I've loved about this is, you know, our, our firm, <laughs> attorneys always want to know where they stand kind of in the ranks, and there's a very simple group of where you can run your fee credits and your, your management or originating credits is the same thing as management credit to kind of see where you are, and, and this is the report that a lot of our attorneys will watch like a hawk. You know, they want to see, they see the receipts coming in and collections coming in, but, you know, how much is going over to them? And this is, if you were on yesterday, one of the tabs that we had on our attorney diary so that our attorneys could view um, exactly what that was and, and be able to understand, um, you know, what their working credits were as opposed to what their, um, you know, originating credits. And, what I love about it is, you know, the system can't lie. <laughs> and I, I've had several people be like, is that right? It can't be right. There's no way that's right. And I, I can't manipulate the numbers if I'm, if I'm doing it in the system as opposed to an Excel sheet. The other thing that's helped us do is we've been able to run fee credit um, reports and catch maybe an error that was done on a fee credit because we didn't have it add up to 100 or one of the... Um, one of them are, we're missing, so it's a very highly accountable system. It's accountable to the attorneys where they see exactly what kind of credit they are receiving based on the way it's set up, and it's accountable because you can make sure you really are making sure it adds up to all of those numbers, and that's as high as I'm, or deep as I'm going to get because I know the next session will be able to show you how this bleeds over into your, your business development and your utilization and realization rates and everything, but the fee credits are um, a really great tool if compensation is important to your firm and, and you want to look at your metrics. There's some great ways to do that, and I know Anthony's going to be distributing a white paper in regards to that. Um, so I will I will let, let you guys take it from here and just if you have any questions. Okay, well, great. Thanks, Susie. Thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. You did a great job. I know... Um, just like yesterday, you gave us a lot of information. A lot of people, I'm sure, are going to take a lot from everything that you had to say. And, you know, as she mentioned, we're going to bleed over into a newer area for a lot of folks that are on this call that are perfect law clients. And if you're a non-perfect law client, there's a lot of buzzwords that have been out in the industry for a long time. Um, business intelligence. So we're going to be getting into uh, a little bit of, you know, the last hour is going to cover a lot of things from a business intelligence standpoint, um, what what we'll do for a moment is we're a little we're about five minutes uh, ahead of time, which is good, which is good. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a quick break, allow people to go use the bathroom, do whatever they want to do for a few minutes, and then we'll start off the last kind of block of mm -hmm. the back office part of the workshop, um, which we'll dedicate primarily to the business intelligence and some roundtable talks, and hopefully we'll get a couple more people who maybe are not scheduled to talk, but um, questions and other things. Now, if you do have some questions for Susie, please feel free to unmute your mic um, at this time and, you know, ask a couple of questions. If not, what we'll do is we'll, we'll pop back in in about five minutes to start off with the business, business intelligence.
I don't. I can't say that. Okay, um, I know we got a lot of dead, dead time here. I'm not sure if someone is called in. We, we're still getting a little bit of feedback. I'm not sure if someone has uh, their cell phone running. Um, but uh, we're, we're getting someone who, we can tell you're working because we hear you typing, but um, if we can get you to mute your mic, that would be greatly appreciated. For the folks that are still here, um, while we're just kind of killing some time, want to let you guys know, we, um, I can't really look back at it now. And about four years ago, we what is now the Perfect Law Special Interest Group. It's a national group of very high-end users. Uh, Susie is uh, the person who leads the Chicago group, along with Chris Vickers, uh, Jerry. De Maria is a member of, well, his is kind of the Boston area, Rhode Island area. We have a, a group in, in New York. Um, Valerie headed a group out of uh, the mid-Atlantic area. Uh, Roger Howerton, uh, we're hoping to get some more Texas firms to join him. Uh, Linda Quint is our Southern California person uh, out in San Diego. But we have a lot of firms all over, and we would love for any folks who are interested that if you do not have a perfect law user group regionally within your area, feel free to reach out to me. What we've been doing is um, folks who are interested, um, we kind of lay out the whole scope of what the user group is about, the national special interest group is about. We do have some very standard, straightforward, this is what we're here for. Um, the primary purpose of it is so that you all have um, parallel partners in your area or in a practice area that you can reach out to that are perfect law users because some things in your firm, um, as great as we may know the software, how people apply it, another firm may know it better. And so it's really about educating, you know, helping you guys educate yourselves with us in the middle to kind of facilitate some things from time to time. And we do go to the user, the special interest group to get ideas which this idea that we're participating in today was born in the user group. So we hope to do more of this. Um, this does, you know, there's a lot of client participation in it, but we want to maximize what that group can do for us as a company, but also for the firms who are a part of the group and for all the perfect law firms who use us. So I wanted to put that out there because I think we're at a point now, four years later, where we're ready to kind of grow this group um, from where it's at, we have about 29 active people in the group as we speak, including a couple of partners. So I hope that, you know, anybody that's listening that's interested, you reach back out and, and become a part of this group. Um, so we're moving into the business intelligence portion of our morning presentation. Um, Cindy Celebrezzi is a, she's, she's just dynamite. She, uh, they converted to Perfect Law some years ago. It actually started with her reviewing, her IP department reviewing Perfect Law in the front office, primarily for the patent and trademark product. And it's kind of crazy how it all happened, but it ended up being flipped to the main core firm, switching to Perfect Law first. And then the IP group came on later after things were stable in the firm. But one of the key components of her decision-making at the time 
was the BI part because she was doing a lot of spreadsheets in her prior product. So um, fortunately and unfortunately, um, things happen in life where Cindy wasn't able to be with us today um, on a good level. Um, but what she wanted to do was, because this is something we've been working on for some months now, probably around six months now, was make sure that she had some involvement. So what we did was we recorded her take on business intelligence to share with you today because for someone who uses the product to the level that she does, you know, I think it's really, really important to hear her, what she has to say. So I am going to, um, you're going to see the screen blank a little bit. I'm going to be switching over to her recording so you can hear from her what she thinks about the perfect law of business intelligence. And I'm going to ask Jerry just kind of step back in and uh, we'll have a little round table about BI and Val Williams as well, because Val has a little exposure to it as well. And we can talk about a little BI and then we'll, we'll kind of carry the rest of the conversation from there. So if you just give me a moment, I'm going to switch over and we're going to hear what Cindy has to say to us. We have Cindy Celebrisi with uh, Wegman Hessler in Cleveland, Ohio. And Cindy chose to go to Perfect Law some time ago. Um, and we talked about a couple of things in her actual decision making that dealt with Juris, which is a product she was using. And she had a lot of spreadsheets that she wanted to automate. So she purchased, or the firm purchased, our business intelligence product as a way to solve those problems. So, you know, it became a very useful tool. And so I just want to let Cindy tell you guys about what the business intelligence product has meant for Wegman Hessler. So, Cindy? Thank you, Anthony. So, uh, as Anthony said, we were originally with Juris, and it's going to be about Juris. It's very um, simple. You can't do a lot of, um, you know, sub-accounts in your GL or anything like that. Everything has to be very simple and a very simple structure. Reporting uh, was generally done with just Excel spreadsheets. So you would have to take all the data that you needed, which generally came from five or six different places, put it all together, put in your calculations, and then drag your calculations down, and then go back and check everything. And anyone who does this regularly, you know that it's time consuming, it's tedious, God forbid you have a headache that day, you know, you're going to be making mistakes, and then you have to go back and check. And, um, you know, from, from that, that point of view, if a mistake gets by you, you know, you're probably going to be crucified by the executive committee. So this was becoming something where, you know, with Juris was sort of out of its shelf life. We needed to do something. It had to be done. Um, so we started looking at Perfect Law, which actually came in for our IP department, and I'm actually very happy about that. As we looked into Perfect Law and we saw how much it could do in all aspects of the firm, so not just the reporting for accounting and finance, but across the entire firm, it had such a great impact on how we work and how we manage our cases. But specifically to the reporting, you know, we went ahead and purchased the BI system, which runs through Excel. So what this does for us is at night, the process is run and it compiles all the data. We have views written. And then in the morning, it's so easy. Once you have the report set up, all you have to do is refresh the data and change the dates. That's pretty much it. And then do your formatting, whatever. And to think about the time, and the margin of error, you know, from the old system compared to using a BI system, it's just phenomenal. And not just for the sake of, you know, accuracy and efficiency, because sometimes as an accountant, I'll admit that I will sacrifice a little bit of efficiency for the sake of accuracy. And I know a lot of people do that, and that's okay. But you know when you're using BI, everything's updated. Overnight, you can run a search to make sure that everything has, every table has been updated so you know the data is complete as it was entered into the system. You only need to change the date after you refresh everything uh, so you know what period you're in. And then from there, you know, producing those reports, your standard reports, it, it's just a snap. 
But further to that, you're able to customize all this stuff, right? So now you have this whole ability to go through all of these different tables and find pieces of information that in your old system, you would have had to calculate yourself, right? So everything's already in these tables. You can pull information in, you can change dates. Um, it's, it's almost sometimes, you know, I go down this black hole of <laughs> computer processing and I can spend a whole day just, you know, looking at things because there's so much that you can get out of the system and it can pretty much answer any question that somebody has. So if people say, can we see this or can we see that or, you know, what's the profitability on this specific person? Literally, I can tell them a specific person's profitability from within their department because of the complex way that we do our overhead now, right? So each department has an overhead number and the entire firm has an overhead number. All of that's calculated in the behind the scenes. I don't have to do it manually. We're also able to calculate profitability by matter. So not just practice class or matter practice class, but also by individual matters. Who worked on that matter? How long did they work on the matter? And what proportion of their costs go against that matter? to show profitability of the matter. So this really opened up an entire sort of view of the landscape of our financial situation here in the firm that is just not available in any other avenue that we've researched. Um, Perfect Law themselves have been great. Um, the programmers that I work with at the very beginning during the conversion, we had our standard reports, which they, you know, set up for us, which was great. But then going forward, you know, I was able to learn the system and then just run with it from there. So for us, the business intelligence unit has just been fundamentally changing to the firm. We've even put custom codes in there so that we can group practice classes into certain departments and then, um, you know, follow those different areas in different ways. It's it's really just been amazing. Okay. Well, I think for a lot of people, Cindy, that is going to be some very helpful information. Um, we really appreciate you taking some time and kind of giving some people a little bit of an idea of what makes that product important, what makes it a little unique in some instances, and what it can do for them. And uh, I'm glad to hear that over the time that you've used it, it's, it's actually solved problems for you in the long run. It actually opened up doorways and avenues to other things maybe you weren't even looking at in the beginning. Absolutely. So that's always been great. So I really appreciate your time, and uh, we look forward to the next time we get to speak. Thank you. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do now is uh, if Jerry DiMaria, if we can get him back, um, involved with us again because Jerry's at a place where he's uh you have to excuse me I'm, I'm I'm actually trying to uh get my computer screen set up again and pull back up the PowerPoint um but Jerry if you're there um okay give me one quick second Jerry go right ahead okay so Jerry I know you are in the process of of actually um, okay you're in the process of, of doing some things with BI and I, I think that uh, it's great to hear that uh, you know we have more and more people that are going to be using it so if you could just give us a little insight into where you are uh, as it relates to BI and, and what your thoughts are sure uh, I'll just apologize to everyone up front for having to listen to me yet again uh, but I'll do my best to uh, interject some thoughts on BI. Uh, been working for those of you who uh, are with Perfect Law, and hopefully you've had an opportunity maybe to work on some different things with Merrill. Um, I have been working with Merrill on some, I would say, macro informational type of dashboards for our shareholders um, so we can pull in different pieces of information into one place. So uh, these are all, all the back end information, as if it wasn't evident from Cynthia's, um, Cindy's um, uh, uh, presentation there. 
uh, that was recorded, <clears throat> all this information is being brought into Excel and different spreadsheets um, and then compiled and it goes into pivot tables and, and things like that. So we are in the process with, with Perfect Law and Merrill in particular of building some um, macro dashboards that you know we can we're looking at our cash positions and any any you know uh, outstanding liabilities that we have maybe we have you know a loan for for uh, you know tenant improvement or something like that um, and we're you know looking at AR at the same time and in whip time and whatnot we're able through the BI product to bring these kind of macro level numbers, albeit disparate numbers from each other, but all important to the overall function and health and well-being of the firm in terms of, you know, financial and productivity. And we're able to bring these all together into a series of these little snapshot dashboards um, that we're building to Excel, but what we're going to do for the shareholders is we are going to publish those out to them in Microsoft BI. So Microsoft has its own Power BI program uh, where you can pull in this data so that shareholders aren't worried about opening up spreadsheets and having to refresh the data and, oh, am I on? Did I click on the wrong tab to look at? Oh, I'm now looking at the data. I don't want to look at the data. I want to look at the dashboard. And you know, they're not all of them are the best with with dealing with more complex spreadsheeting and and pivot tables and things like that. So we're the ability to bring them into uh, the Microsoft Power BI product, which many of you it is an add-on. So it's a higher level function. If you for those that have Office 365. Uh, subscriptions. This is an additional license that you would have to add on. So uh, we're adding them on just for our shareholders and, of course, myself um, to be able to function and bring these dashboards in. So it's a much cleaner, much more simplified view for them. And what we're working on and what's going to be kind of cool is you can have, if you want, you don't have to, but you can have drill downs. So if, say, you're looking at your AR and you're looking at it in buckets, um, you have the ability to click on those and drill down into different ways. So if you want to drill down and look by client, you can do that. And then drill down again and look at matter, you can do that. Or maybe you want to drill down by billing attorney and then client. And, so it's going to offer that unbelievable flexibility for the shareholders to slice and dice the data that maybe they want to see in that particular moment. Um, but the overall dashboard is going to, again, give that just that macro look to things. Here we are. Here are our, here are our cash account, our operating accounts, and here, here are our current balances, and here's where we are in our line of credit maybe. And maybe a different loan or what you know whatever you got going collected revenues and so these are the kind of things we're building in and we've got some other graphs on realization billing realization and collection realization and, and things like that receipt realization so we're we're looking and we're bringing all these different things in on this you know larger scale uh, desktop, if you will, that that a shareholder or a partner, depending upon your setup, can look at and just quickly get. Okay, yep, that's where we stand, and and we have some 24 month look back so that they can, um, whether it be a bar graph or a line graph, where they can see. Oh yeah, over time, this is you know kind of the trend that's been going, and so uh, we're really. You know, excited to look at that. Uh, you know, when I was first asked to do this, um, I think they were expecting me to just cobble together some numbers into a spreadsheet. And I said, "Well, no. I I think there's a much better way to do this, where we're going to have real live data feed in uh, for you, and it's going to be um, much more user friendly for you. And we still have all the flexibility of the design. So." 
Um, you know, again, we're still at the beginning part of it. Um, I know uh, Cindy was much more further down the road than, than we are, uh, but we're looking at these things uh, to be able to quickly, you know, glance at something, because we all like visuals, right? We all like pictures. We're better, we're better at that than we are staring at a spreadsheet full of numbers. You're going to get much more out of a bar graph or a line graph or, or something, you know, or a pie chart then you're going to get out of just like a, a, a mind-numbing spreadsheet full of numbers. And so that's what we're looking to do so our shareholders can quickly just glance at it and go, okay, yep, that's where we are. And also that's where we've been and this is where we're going and look at some trends and things like that. But, you know, you can look at, you can look at various, you know, things. Another one that we're bringing in is we, we do budgeting within the system. I don't know if anyone uses the productivity budgets that you can have for billable time or whatnot in perfect law. Um, I've been using them uh, for years to track, you know, if we have a, um, you know, if, if we say our, our target for attorneys is, say, 1,800 hours, you know, where are they? Well, now we're going to have, as part of the BI product, uh, a chart that shows uh, a, a stacked bar graph that's going to show, okay, well, here was your target, and are you under your target or over your target? And that's color. So it's it's going to be apparent. It's going to the part that they're under is going to turn red, um, so that people can quickly glance at different attorneys and go, "Okay, who who may we have to look at to see why they're uh, below their target?" Um, you know, or across months, and we're tracking that obviously throughout the year. So, um, you know, it, it's just another feature that I think is goes to the practice management side and the in you know the back office side of perfect law and what and the kind of the exciting things that they're doing uh, on that end as well. I mean I think uh, when you're you know seeing different systems and looking at it, a lot of times everyone gets hung up on the glitz and the shininess of the of the front office and and all that. No one really wants to dig into the weeds in the back office because that's not fun. Um, so but that's, that's really where the strength um, of Perfect Law's product is in the back office. I, I just, uh, I, I can't imagine that there are too many products that are rivaling the, the accounting and the general ledger and, and whatnot that, that you can get out of Perfect Law. And it's just, it's just a great example of the flexibility of the product and the different, different things you can do with it. Um, and so we're really exploring the BI in terms of that. And, um, you know, like I said, we're, we're getting close to where we're going to be able to go live with the, the Microsoft BI, Power BI, uh, with these graphs for our shareholders. So, you know, it's a, it's a good time. And like I said, you know, any way you want to slice and dice the data, you really can't. Um, it's just a matter of figuring out, um, you know, what you want to look at how you want to look at it, and then working with Perfect Law to say, okay, I really need to see this. And how can, how can we make that happen? Um, and then just, you know, going forward. So I, I highly recommend it. Um, if, if you're considering it, uh, definitely get in touch and, and uh, you know, let them send you the information so you can see what it, what it can do. Okay, great, Jerry. I really appreciate it. Now, um, Val, uh, you're, you're still there, and, you, you know, you had a little exposure to this uh, at your prior firm. Uh, you have any additional comments you can add to uh, what Jerry has just mentioned? You know, he, Jerry made some very great points. And when I look at, when I'm thinking about the way we were doing things while I was still with the firm, um, there's so many more efficient ways to compile this data and get it out to people uh, without you receiving the phone call and saying, well, how many hours has this one worked this month? And an hour later, you get a call that says, well, what were they doing during those hours? And, you know, you go through that motion a couple of times. This tool gives you the ability to deliver that information in a timely manner. And, you know, it cuts out, it cuts out the middleman. Uh, you can get right down to it and find out what's going on. And I think, um, you know, Jerry, what you were talking about with budgeting time, I think that's great because I remember one of the things that I had to do was report on associate and staff time, um, you know, this gives them that information at the touch of a button and how much, how easy can it be? 
I mean, it's just, it makes it so much more efficient for the attorneys. And that's part of an administrator's job is to keep the attorneys working on the legal matters and not worrying about all of this back office stuff. So, um, you know, I think there's some wonderful tools available to everybody who has that desire to automate that process and get it into the hands of the attorneys. Okay. Now, um, we're actually uh, quite a bit ahead of time, and, and that's good. That's good. Um, does anybody have any questions that they, they have for Jerry or Val as it relates to BI? If, if you do, feel free. You know, right now we have it's open mic time. If you want to unmute your mic and, and ask your question, we we greatly appreciate it. Uh, well, we're, we're we're quiet. So here's what we're gonna do. Um, let's just go ahead and kind of wrap up the day. Um, I know uh, the back office is something that's really key to a, a, a lot of people. And um, it's probably the most consistently reviewed part of any software system that we talk to firms about over anything else. It seems that everything starts in the back office. You know, we make a front office sale and it typically is the back office folks who trigger how we end up in the front office as well. Um, so I know uh, yesterday Val's with us. I'm not sure if Mike Burks is with us today. I know he was traveling, so I'm not sure if he's there. Um, but what we want to kind of do is kind of wrap up the day. I know we talked about a lot. There was a lot of good information today. You know, we've gone over everything from um, Jerry's earlier conversation on, on the imaging, AP imaging and its functions and what it can do for you and building compliance. You know, this is an insurance defense workshop. So those things are key for everyone. Um, I don't think, you know, for most of the insurance defense firms that we sell, if there's one feature that will be sold at some point, either at the go live or shortly after, it's always building compliance. So that's very key. I think we have Mike. Mike, you there? I'm here. Okay. So, so Mike, um, you know, just to kind of start the wrap up, Mike's never used our BI, but he did have a lot of experience with BI at his prior firm when they when they went to Baker Donalds, at least. I um, mean, their tools. And from what you've heard, Mike, I mean, what's your thoughts compared to what you know about BI and, what's, and what it can do for you? Oh, BI is, is the bomb, and y'all agree. What I saw today is exactly what we wound up doing. Having everything now is about profitability. You know, it used to be the old days of increasing rates just make yourself profitable that way. Those days are gone. It's all about the vigilance. So these dashboards, we, we would have it from a partner level, practice group level, the, uh, the associate level, and all the way down to the paralegal. So they can see where they were via hours. That's what Jerry was saying. That, uh, that's exactly what you're doing. Uh, collections, the same way. You're going to see how you're doing by hours, how you're doing by collections. The same thing. All those things are super important. You know, along the way that uh, you've got that capability you now with your perfect one. It's awesome. Okay. Well, um, you know, uh, kind of in, in wrapping things up, Val. You, you, you know, you got a lot of experience with us um, and working from an insurance defense standpoint. You know, of all the things you've heard today, what kind of is that one thing you remember as being really key for you? in all the things that, that, that you've experienced? I think um, there's two things that were really important um, uh, that were big game changers for us. One of them, I believe Susie talked about, was um, general matter numbers for your timekeepers um, to be able to track those items that you may not be able to bill for. And it's very important um, from everything from keeping track of CLEs to, you know, who's working for who, uh, there's a lot of time that we spend that isn't necessarily billable to a client. So I think that that's one thing. If you haven't investigated that, you should take a look into it. The other thing is with the um, billing compliance. Um, you know, attorneys make the agreements with the clients and they get all the documentation and everything. It's vital that they pass that along to their accounting people. Um, or their administration staff so that things like billing compliance can be implemented 
and kept up to date. I can just thinking of it, I can think of so many uses for it, not only in the insurance defense section, but in other areas of the firm or with particular practice groups. Um, having that billing compliance tool is key to success. You'll spend less time on your auditing um, and resubmitting bills to, to have them approved. It's just going to be a, I think that's a big game changer for people. Okay. Now, um, Mike, any parting words you'd like to have for folks? Uh, you know, I, I always say that you and Val have a very unique view of perfect law because you're retired now. <laughs> so, you know, it's a look back. <laughs> And, you know, you're not seeing the day-to-day -day headaches that all the other folks are seeing. But, you know, sometimes, you know, it's always nice to have the, the thoughts of someone who they've done this, they've been around, they've, you know, fought a lot of the battles, and they understand what, you know, you're going through on a day-to-day -day basis and just any advice you can pass along to the folks that are on the call with us now. Uh, well, I can say that, uh, you know, there are a lot of them, attorneys that, that we had in Gambrell and Stoltz that uh, when Baker Donaldson still, still wish that they had perfect law because it was so easy. There's a lot of information that everybody's heard about. It's like, uh, it's I like to say, take a sip through a fire hose. But the software is so intuitive, it's so easy to pick up. And we had tremendous compliance when we converted, like somebody was talking about the time. It's easy that people that used to do litigation, they embrace it. And um, it, it, it was, um, I don't know, it was, it was a great product. It was easy to convert, uh, great support, the training. We loved it for, uh, as long as we had it until we, we merged. And, Okay. All right. Well, um, so we're we you know we're way ahead of time, which is good. But um, in wrapping up the day, um, just like I did yesterday, um, you know these these types of events. This is the first time we've ever done this, and the fact that we we're able to get through two days, basically four hours, three and a half hours of good information to pass along to people. I, I'm very pleased. All we're going to do is make this better. Um, for the folks that are still on, if you weren't here yesterday, please mark your calendars. If you are a workman's comp firm and you are not using the Perfect Law Workers Comp module and you want to understand and know what that's all about, on May 11th, we're going to be doing a full workers' comp workshop where excuse me, it's going to be a little different. We're going to have some of our clients, but we're also going to bring in a product specialist to spend some time and show you guys why, you know, we think we have a great home run here. Why places like Chicago, who, as crazy as it may sound, we have firms who are competitors that that are that are using our product. And it was a, their, their competition that told them, you need to buy this product. Um, so we're going to spend some time and show, you know, some practice area things and, and workers' comp. Um, I'm hoping for later this summer for firms that have patent and trademark, we'll do some of the same things. Um, our goal, my goal is to try to promote a couple more of these events, if, you know, throughout the year and hopefully do this at least annually where we get together and whether it's something that we're doing um, or something that we feel is good information to pass along, maybe it's a new product. Um, it's one thing for us to tell you, but it's a different story when someone who's actually using it or going through with things can get on the phone or get on a call, something like this, and actually spend time and tell you what it is and why it works for them. And, you know, for a lot of the folks who look around and they wonder, you know, well, you know, I want to be able to do this. I'm not sure how that's done. We have people that are a lot of firms who are doing a lot of things and you just don't know. And they've gone through the hassles and the headaches to make it work that you haven't gone through yet. And that's why we wanted to do this. Again, for folks who are interested, um, we are, you know, we have an active special interest group. Um, it is a very simple process. You just have to reach out to me and let me know if it's something you're interested in. This special interest group was the catalyst to this event. And the hope is, is that we're going to be doing more and more things to pull our clients together. Um, 
you know, and just like I mentioned yesterday, you know, whenever someone signs with me as a client, the first email I send out to them is welcome to the perfect law family. And I talk about the fact that, you know, just like family, there are times we might not like each other. There are times we may send you a bill and you don't like it. There are times you may want something from us and we have to find a way to make it work. And for us, it's hard, but we do. And, you know, even when we disagree, we agree that we're family. And I wanted to make sure that everyone here understands what really makes this go. It doesn't, this, this product doesn't sell itself. This product doesn't support itself. It doesn't train itself. It doesn't implement itself. And there are a lot of key people here at this company that make this happen. And in the back office, um, probably one of the smartest women I've ever met when it comes to financial stuff, Rona. I get so many calls about Rona and who wants to work with Rona because of something they heard. But Rona Edelman is absolutely a star. Meryl is our BI guru. She has that whole department. Uh, again, just awesome. And, you know, to have... The ability to work with two people like that is just, you know, it's something I'll take to my grave as being one of the best parts of being here at Perfect Law as long as I've been here. Um, Jim and Lou work uh, with back office implementations just like Meryl. And when you really look at it, you know, different personalities, but I haven't had anyone not enjoy their time working with either one of them. And again, you know, Lou has experience as an administrator. Jim is... <laughs> Jim is our jokey joke guy. He used to do all, all of the uh, report writing classes. So you, you, you're talking anytime he implements a system, you know, you're talking to the guy that helps most of the firms here deal with custom reports. Um, Lou uh, is awesome as well. Uh, he just did a couple of installs and, and just, you know, I, I can't speak enough about him. Lionel is a person who works a lot of you guys that deal have recount and all these other different modules that have to interact with third parties and probably the only time you speak with Lionel. Been here since the beginning. Um, quiet in nature, nothing but pure brain. Um, an awesome guy to work with. Um, then you have a couple of folks that are new to us. Um, we have a little team that everybody's asking about building compliance, building compliance. After today, um, Elizabeth and Joel, who are new here, some of our new hires that are going to be heading that, that whole task of getting your building compliance up and running and training you and doing all those things. Looking forward to what they bring to the table. And then you have, you know, some other folks that are here that never, you just never hear these names. And that's why I'm doing it now is because I want to make sure people understand just what, you know, what's out there and who you're working with. Uh, we had a new pair, uh, paralegal, Tatiana, just hired, and she's been absolutely great. She's been here very long, Can't, you know, and I'm already hearing great things about her. I know she's going to be a great fit for everything we do. And you know, we have folks like Lion, uh, Anel and Brian Cohen who <clears throat> typically works on the front office or network stuff, and folks work with them all the time. And, 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 you know, other than I have a problem, they never get to, you know, hear the good stuff or the results of what they do. And yesterday we had a lot of good conversations and good comments about what they do. Um, but probably of all the people here, um, every Perfect Law user um, – across the country, across the world, because we have some folks that have offices even in Europe. Um, uh, for a lot of folks that don't know it, Perfect Law is just two firms away from being the exclusive software vendor that supplies law firms in the Bahamas. We have every law firm in the Bahamas but two. Um, that says a lot. Um, and Cynthia, I left out Cynthia, who, who's retired now, but she still worked with some of the firms, and she's done a lot of those, those installs there. But um, Carl Williams and John Duncan. Um, can't speak enough about them. You know, this company works because of their vision and, and the work they did to build the foundation. And I really think at the end of the day, um, you know, we all owe them a thanks. And I know yesterday Eric from uh, Kabiki Draper gave John a great shout out and talked about his brilliance and the things that he's done. And, you know, he can be a pain, but at the same token, one of the smartest men you'll ever meet in your life. And, I want to make sure that, you know, people don't go unrecognized. You know, this is about our clients being able to speak to each other and learn from each other. Um, but also, as we leave, I want to make sure you guys know who we are because we are family. You know, the goal for us is not to be here and go away like a lot of our competitors. It's to be here for a long time. And, you know, being a probably the only employee-owned company in this business um, with a longevity plan says a lot. So I really appreciate everybody who attended. Um, 
to folks like Roger Howerton, who's on right now and, and presented yesterday. Thank you so much for the time. Chris Vickers isn't here today, but she, she helped us out yesterday and spent a lot of time. Eric Gonzalez from Kabiki Draper, when you get an IT guy of a 500 plus man law firm to spend time and just talk to people about how they have grown with us, that's, that says a lot. So I truly appreciate everybody's time and their energy. And you know, for months we've been talking about this and putting it together and I am taking my bow as we got it done. Um, it is not the last time, it's only the beginning. So I look forward to the next time we get to do something like this. I hope everybody that showed up um, takes something back to your firm that you learned. Uh, here in the next few days, it's gonna take us a little time. We're gonna take each individual session, we're gonna chop this up, we've been recording it. So we're gonna chop this up and make it available for everybody so that you can share certain pieces of it along with if you want someone to sit through the entire workshop, you'll have the entire workshop. And we will, uh, it's gonna take us some time, but we're gonna get that done for you. Um, so um, just bear with us. But again, thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you guys have done. And I truly appreciate it. I will be sending out every to everyone that's gonna, you're gonna see uh, a couple of things, there's some white papers that we did for fee credit scoring. There's also some wh a white paper on business intelligence. I'll be sending you guys out Jerry D. Maria's case study. Um, and there's a couple other things that we put together. So please, when you get that, share it with as many people in your firm as you'd like. If you have any questions on anything, my email is ab at perfectlaw.com and feel free to reach out to me and I'll make sure that I, I respond. But again, thanks to everyone. And I hope everyone has a great day, great weekend. And until next time.